Well, it turns out that Concord failing only two weeks after launch and having its game shut down and all of its players scattered, as well as the game reportedly costing Sony upwards of $200 million, was only scratching the surface as a ton of new information has come out today, including the announcement that the game's director is now stepping down from the company. We're going to start with this story from Insider Gaming and then move on to some of the spiciest info to come out about Concord, including what the workplace environment was like, how much money it actually cost to develop it and how little they actually completed as the release date approach and all of these things pointing to chaos and disaster behind the scenes of this video game that people tried to embellish downplay and undermine for the longest time while gamers were pointing it out to people that this game was a catastrophic failure through and through we've got this story again from insider gaming concord director steps down two weeks after game goes offline it's really funny isn't it the game is only out for two weeks and then shuts down and then two weeks later the guy who was in charge steps down because i mean really what can you say the game was a doozy two weeks ago concord had failed so badly that it was taken offline leaving the team at firewalk studios sitting in despair at the situation they'd found themselves in the game that they'd spent years putting together was dead on arrival pulling in so few players and missing the mark so monumentally that it failed to gain an ounce of traction at release now the game's director Ryan Ellis has stepped down from his position and moved into a support role per a report from Kotaku. Going down, it says, in Kotaku's report, it was mentioned that Ellis was the main shot caller on Concord, which failed miserably from the moment it hit the market last month. It was only this summer that the game received a proper trailer with many balking at the price tag. Yeah, that price tag was insane. $40 for a game that could potentially be free to play, especially since its competitors were free to play. It was insane that they even suggested that price at all and they agree they say that it would have fared much better as a free-to-play shooter in a quote handed to kotaku it was said that ryan deeply believed in that project and bringing players together through the joy in it regardless of there being things that could have been done differently throughout development he's a good human and full of heart you know it really is funny that they say this because that seems to have been one of the biggest problems behind the scenes in development of this game whoever was in charge of this game did not let people speak negatively about it in fact there is a claim being made by somebody who worked in the industry who has a very solid source that says that the environment was very toxically positive people could not say anything negative about the game or they would get into some kind of trouble the person in charge was always championing the game behind the scenes and making sure that nobody said anything negative nobody could push the game in a positive direction and because of that a lot of things went wrong with the game although the game had been going through growing pains and financial disasters long before this game was even announced back in 2020 or 2021 it says that it was ellis who published the blog post highlighting the failure an imminent shutdown of Concord, he wrote that the game hadn't landed the way the team at Firewalk had intended and that it would be taken offline to explore options. That was two weeks ago and already the wider industry has forgotten all about Concord. Well, that is until today because we've got a post here from Colin Moriarty who recently did an interview with somebody who worked on the inside, bringing a very solid source as this individual claims that things behind the scenes at Firewalk Studios were way more insane than people could have possibly possibly imagined and Sony's ambition and their delusional dream of this game apparently being the next Star Wars as you will see they claim were ill met and ended in disaster when all was said and done this is what Colin Moriarty has to say he says I spoke extensively with someone who worked on Concord and it's so much worse than you think it was internally referred to as the future of PlayStation with Star Wars like potential in a dev culture of toxic positivity halted any negative feedback making it cost 400 million dollars which is twice as much as many content creators out there including myself thought that this game cost at first it turns out the game had already spent 200 million dollars by the time that sony had decided to purchase them and at that point they didn't even make that much content for the game so it was already costing them hundreds of millions of dollars and they barely had anything to go off of save for an alpha play test so i've got several things to share about this i'm going to go through this video for a few very important points that you guys need to hear the first of which is this one so take a listen so the big thing that you really need to know here about this is that concord costs about 400 million dollars to make oh my god and um 
the, <laughs> these guys can't believe it while they're listening to this guy. They're like, really? Because honestly, where did all that money go? It's a lot of money to spend on a video game. Have you ever heard of that kind of a budget? And I was making a joke earlier, like how many cheeseburgers could any of us have bought with that much money? And the actual number is about 114 million something, but really who's counting? Sony certainly wasn't. They were just throwing money at this game. We've got more to show you guys. So let's jump ahead a little bit. So in the first quarter of 2023, Concord had basically entered an alpha state. Up to the point that the game went into alpha state, um, they had already spent about $200 million on it. And it's unclear how much of that money is from probably monsters and the original investors into the game and how much of that money was from Sony. So what he is saying right here is that by the time Sony had bought this company in order to push this game out, Firewalk had already spent $200 million by that point, and the game was only in an alpha state. If you ask me, $200 million is the kind of money that you would have a game in a completed state or a beta state at the very least. But what I'm understanding from this is that it was in an alpha state, and most of the content from what he is saying was not even there. And now things are starting to make sense as to why this guy stepped down down as the game's director. This entire thing was a disaster from the get-go, and it continued to be a disaster until Sony bought them, to which it became a mainstream disaster. But guys, don't worry, it gets even worse than this. Let's jump ahead. The scuttlebutt behind the scenes about Concord is that the game was in a laughable shape. It was in such horrible shape that Sony felt like they needed to spend that much money again, so, you know, 200 plus 200 to get the, the game to to the MVP status. Now that is some truly spicy exposition right there, guys. Did you hear what he said? He basically said that Sony saw that the game was in terrible shape by the time that they bought it. Like when they purchased the company, they saw that their alpha state was really not an alpha state at all, that the game was in laughable shape and they had already spent a couple of hundred million dollars by that point. So Sony was like, okay, so we'll just double that. They spent the same amount that they had already spent over the last few years developing the game so they spent an extra 200 million dollars racking that number up to 400 million and we still don't have confirmation on how much of the aforementioned money was being distributed or where it all came from but the fact that sony spent so much on this and had such high hopes for it is really insane to me there was nothing done a major expense was having to urgently outsource much of the game to other studios to finish ah building the game out so in order to finish and building the game they had to outsource the game to other studios which also cost a hefty penny these guys were just dumping money into this game unnecessary amounts of money more money than some of the biggest budget films out there would spend for a game that wasn't even guaranteed to bring sony all of this success and you have to remember that they also pushed out to transmedia giving certain portions of the game to different bigger companies like amazon so that they could put it in their little tv show you guys remember that little episode that Concord was in a lot going on with this game even though it wasn't making a lick of money at all it's not only about the ongoing cost which would be in the millions to keep the game going per month but that the game cost about 400 million dollars to make so not only did it cost 400 million dollars but this is something i feel a lot of people don't understand about these live service games you still have to spend a crap ton of money after the game is released in order to keep the game going so when you have a live service game like overwatch you obviously have to bring money in somehow and in order to maintain it you still have to put money into it so they were still going to end up spending millions of dollars after the game launched in order to keep the game going so it's not just 400 million dollars it's 400 million dollars plus all of the months that this game actually exists no wonder they shut it down so quickly they couldn't maintain it and they couldn't ever hope to maintain it honestly why did they even bother with this game in the first place it seems like a complete waste of time kind of said like this must be sony's biggest loss ever on a game and it is it's the biggest game sony's ever released from a budgetary standpoint. wow it's the part. biggest game they ever released yeah. from a budgetary standpoint he and says it's totally unintuitive there are more there are games that are in development right now at sony first and second party that are more expensive than this so this is one of sony's most expensive games it's definitely sony's most expensive game this year and it has cost them a whole lot of money not just to make it but to shut it down too this has lost sony millions of dollars hundreds of millions of dollars and they lost all of it because they made no money they made about a million dollars gross revenue and then they gave it all back holy so crap huge... dude they only made a million dollars in gross revenue this is as per this guy's source and they didn't even 
get to keep any of that money that they made. They had to give all of the money back to the people that they worked with. So they made no money from this. In fact, they lost way more than they ever anticipated. This is insane. It really is insane. What a catastrophic disaster that this video game is. The development, the marketing, everything. And this is on top of all of the other problems that were going on inside of the game's development and behind the scenes at the studio itself with these people being overly toxically positive about the game, not saying anything bad about it, all of these horrible ideas being implemented without question and all of this money being dumped into these ideas so that this game could somehow survive, but nobody was willing to say no. Nobody was willing to say, hey, this needs to be fixed or hey, this needs to be reworked. If that had happened, maybe we would have a much better game on our hands, but it also makes a lot of sense that it didn't happen because take a look at what the game actually provided you. A mediocre first person shooter experience with a bunch of pronouns tacked on so that they could get a few quick ESG bucks that they ended up not even being able to keep at the end of the day because they ended up giving every single penny back and made absolutely no money. Incredible. A toxic positivity vibe. You weren't allowed to say anything, apparently internally, about this game. About how, like, something's Nothing. wrong with it, character designs are not right, and so on and so forth. They really, truly believe this was Herman Holst's baby, apparently. He Herman Holst. Was, it was himself a massive champion of the game. So the guys in charge, as I said, they were not letting anybody say anything bad about it. And everybody knows how important it is to have ideas to bounce off of each other. Not everybody is supposed to agree. It's why you have teams making games instead of just one singular person making games because those people that are working with you are supposed to keep you grounded when you're coming up with a bunch of crazy ideas. They're supposed to keep you anchored to reality and give you realistic expectations about what can be implemented into the game and what should be kept out so that you're not spending too much money, you're not setting your employees up for failure, and you're providing customers with a satisfactory product. But from what I'm hearing, none of those things happened and the game ended up not even being a completed project until way later in the game after hundreds of millions of dollars were spent and this is why people didn't buy it this is why it doesn't look appealing to players and this is most likely why the guy stepped down there is just no excuse for this kind of failure and honestly there really is no way that this guy could have walked out unscathed without suffering some kind of loss and i feel that this is a dark omen for the future of firewalk studios as well how are they going to survive as a company when none of their employees are being paid and no game is being developed after eight long years of wasting their lives and a bunch of resources that could have been used properly in other areas of the gaming industry. What in the world are these people going to do? And just as a reminder, since we're talking about toxic individuals behind the scenes, let me refer you to some of the developers who had wonderful things to say about the people who didn't buy their game. Concord Dev dismisses haters as talentless freaks following lackluster launch. And I do believe that this has come full circle. Gamers, listen. We all acknowledge that we are talentless freaks freaks and we decided not to buy your game. Many people, including the very audience you tried to cater to. And in fact, as of now, and as of even a week before the game's shut down, only a handful of people were playing. So let's take one more look back at that video. So this guy recaps everything very nicely, wraps it all up, and I'm going to let you guys listen to him right here. Check this out. I am totally solid on this source, by the way. So that's why I'm willing to share it with you. Because again, I don't, I'm not really a journalist. So yeah, the big things to take away, $400 million loss. The game was in horrible shape as of 18 months ago before release not even wow. monetization no onboarding no onboarding no monetization in there the game was in such bad shape at that point that they spent the budget of it again in urgent outsourcing to get the game finished from all of these different angles over an 18 month period internally the game was considered part of the future of PlayStation Wow, with heavy cross-media references and a system of toxic positivity. Yeah, I remember they had cutscenes for this game too. They had cutscenes and like I said earlier, they were putting this story in other TV shows at different studios like Amazon. Didn't allow anyone to meaningfully change yep. the course of Can't the game. Can't meaningfully change the course because of the game when nobody is trying to fix any of the problems. Everybody's like, hey, that's a good idea. Oh no, this is totally fine. We don't want to offend anybody. Of course, our game and our department is full of these DEI individuals. We can't offend each other. We have to just say yes and be accepting of every little idea that comes our way. People at the top truly believe in something. You know, you're not going to be able to do much about that, I don't think, from the trenches. No, to be honest with you, though, I feel that if these people really actually cared about this game, then it would not have been in the state that it would have been in. They would have cracked down on all of the mistakes that the studio was making. They would have said, hey, you need to fix this. You need to fix that because that's where real passion comes from. It's a willingness 
business to fix the mistakes that you make and try to refine your product so that your customers are satisfied because of the fact that they didn't do any of these things and they just let this game run rampant spending millions of dollars and pouring all of those funds down the drain and their game and their studio and the game's director that just shows me that sony and firewalk studios did not care enough about this game to actually make it playable and workable for people and that's why they are in the spot that they're in right now so the game's director has gone bye bye concord has gone bye bye i wonder if firewalk studios is next if that is the case then it is something that they have deserved for a while because all of those years they were spending hundreds of million dollars apparently doing absolutely nothing to make the game better it seems that sony was willing to do the same amount of work or lack thereof and spend the same amounts of money that led to absolutely nothing imagine the indie games that all of these studios could have made with that amount of money i've seen and played amazing games with only a fraction of that budget and even less so and i've seen movies with a fraction of that budget as well godzilla minus one for example there are just so many different ways that this game could have been developed and so many problems that could have been fixed by somebody actually saying no hey let's take a second look at this but none of those things happened and now this is exactly where concord firewalk studios and its former game director stand and that is all i've got for you guys in this video today i hope you all enjoyed it if you haven't had the chance to like it and share it with your friends that would be awesome and hey if you're feeling ultra spicy consider subscribing to my channel so that you're always up to date with what kind of thing i've got going on i look forward to seeing you all in the next one later meow meow